Want to support the channel? Go check out my Patreon. There's perks like access to videos early and plenty more rewards. Every contribution is appreciated as it keeps me making great content for you guys. For more information, go to patreon.com slash Macwell. As an Arsenal supporter, I love being able to lead my club to incredibly unrealistic aspirations, but unfortunately, I can't make an actual career mode series out of it because for whatever reason, sleep ASMR fills the results when you look up FIFA 21 Arsenal career mode. I don't really know why, but it's just there, I guess. So I'll do the next best thing. A rebuild. Watch me, an aspiring manager, take Arsenal back to glory. Where the goons and we're gunning, Arsenal are coming. Welcome to the Ultimate Arsenal Football Club Rebuild. In this video, we are about to form a team that would make the Invincibles piss their pants. The goal is to win both the League and the Champions League in the same year, and we will take as many seasons as possible to do so. The only rule is that I can only use transfer scouts. No so FIFA. This just makes it more fun this way. Besides, potential means nothing in this game anymore. I won't go into much detail of what will be shown because I'll just let the video do the talking. This is the squad we'll be starting out with. We have Aubameyang up top at the striker position right behind him is Mesut Ozil. It's a bit unrealistic to have Ozil playing because, well, as we all know, uh, he, he's definitely not going to be doing that any longer for Arsenal. Not to mention, right, you know, we, we're on a bit of a goal drought. We're not really scoring that many goals, you know. I, I wonder, I, I really wonder who could possibly help us in this time of dread. Enough with shading my own club. On the wings, we have Saka and Pepe. The midfield, we have Tomas Barty, our new signing, and Danny Ceballos. We got the back four of Kieran Tierney, Gabriel, David Luiz, and Hector Bellerin. And to round it all off, it's Bernd Leno at the goalkeeping position. So looking at this squad, my plans were simple. Get a new defender to replace David Luiz, and buy a new attacking midfielder to support Aubameyang, because Ozil is a bit old. To start off the season, we have 90.2 million to spend. Kicking it all off is Rob Holding going out to Cologne for 13.2 million. He will be one of many defenders to probably leave this year. Joe Willock will be loaned out to Valladolid because I just don't think he'll get much playtime. A little bit of a shocker here, but Alexandra Lacazette goes out to Atletico Madrid for 43 million. This kind of allows Enketia, who has a ton of potential and is very young, to maybe show what he's got. Socrates, another defender, leaves for Newcastle, 10.2 million. William Saline not exactly the best rating to get a lot of playtime, so we're just going to load him out to Sociedad. Our last defender that we sold was Callum Chambers, 11.5 million. He goes out to Turkey to play for Galatasaray. And with all those players sold, we have even more money. So... Who did we buy? Well, we got Martin Odegaard from Real Madrid for 70.2 million. He's going to be a great player to replace Ozil. Even though he's been around for 10 years, he's still very, very young, and I expect a lot from this guy. Jose Maria Jimenez, 75 million from Atletico Madrid. We wanted a new defender, and I wanted one of the best that I could get. So 84 rated Jimenez was the perfect deal. And one more transfer, and this one was more of a filler. We got Leander Dendonker for 23 million plus El any. He comes from Wolves, and he's going to help bulk up the midfield depth. And now you can look at the squad before we go into the halfway part of the season. It's Aubameyang still at the top. Now we have Odegaard replacing Ozil. Jimenez replaces David Luiz, which just means our defense kind of improves in depth now that we have David Luiz and Mustafi as backups. And then we have someone who could hopefully help us off the bench, Leander Dendonker. 20 matches played right before the January transfer window, and we are fifth in the league, which is actually kind of impressive. In the Europa League, we barely had a single problem, no losses whatsoever, 4 wins, 2 draws, 14 points, and we're on to the next round. And at the end of the season, we actually dropped down to 6th place. 69 points, 19 wins, 12 draws, 7 losses, we scored 63 goals, 44 conceded. Not exactly the greatest numbers, but like I said before, we're a team that's growing, and I really think we'll start to see more and more improvement as we go into the seasons. In the FA Cup, we unfortunately lost to Manchester City this time, 2-1 in the semifinals. We didn't do that great in the Carabao Cup, losing to Crystal Palace on penalties in round 3. But in the final of the Europa League, we beat Leipzig 2-1, and that means we qualify for the Champions League. And top scorers, we had Pepe and Aubameyang with 14 and 15 goals, respectively. In the assist column, we had Pepe in second with 10 assists. Not exactly the best season for Leno, but it was probably his defense that let him down quite a bit. Only 7 clean sheets, he ranked 10th. Top scorers in the Europa League, Aubameyang had 8, Pepe had 7. Assists-wise, Aubameyang had 6, and Leno actually did pretty well in the Europa League with 6 clean sheets. And we're going to do this every season, where we just kind of look at the overall top scorers and top assisters. Aubameyang led the club with 27 goals, followed by him was
was Nico Pepe, who got 26 goals. Then it was Martin Odegaard, probably signing of the season with 11 goals. And those young prospects on the left wing, we put some trust in them, and Martinelli paid off our trust. Nine goals. And then to round off the top five, it's Tomas Partey with six goals. I just want to point out also, Skodran Mustafi was our sixth top scorer. Anyways, on the assist column, we have Nico Pepe with 17, leading the club. Then Aubameyang with 11. Odegaard with 8, nearly getting those double digits. Xhaka with 4. And then finally, Tomas Partey with 4. Second year with Arsenal, and now Torreira is back from his Atletico Madrid loan, and so is Genduzzi. The midfield depth is even larger, but as a result of that, that means most of the midfielders we have right now are going to play even less. So the plan is to see which one plays the least amount, and probably sell them in January. A little bit of an improvement in the budget now that we're in the Champions League, 112.1 million. Transfers for Season 2, our first one was another center back, Konstantinos Mavropanos for 15.5 million he goes out to Spain to play for Celta Vigo. And with the addition of that money, we decided to get Fabian from Napoli for 70 million. He's going to replace Torreira in the starting 11, and I know what you're saying. Oh, you're not trusting Torreira? Listen, okay? I just, I don't know about him right now. It's better just to splash money on a better improvement than to do nothing and be questioning something. I'm sure that's probably something Pep Guardiola has said. Anyways, Ben Sheaf, 4.2 million. He goes out to Celta Vigo as well. Ozil has gone out to Wolves for 20.5 million. I just thought since he was aging, we could probably get a backup center attacking midfielder that's even better. And speaking of a better center attacking midfielder, we got Danny Olmo for 50 million from Leipzig. The right side of the pitch, we don't have great depth. We have Nico Pepe, who is absolutely insane, but after him is Willian and Reese Nelson, who are players that I just don't think are enough. So as a result of that, I bought Andan Yanezai for 36 million from Sociedad. We also threw out another center back in Pablo Mari for 13.5 million. He's going to Atalanta. My beautiful dreams of Willian leaving Arsenal have finally occurred. 8 million out to PSV. Oh wait, I forgot. This man's contract is so huge that PSV can't deal with it. And we are stuck with Willian. Yes! I'm so happy he's staying. And one more transfer. Cedric leaves for Everton, 6.7 million. And now look at the squad. Nothing really changed besides the fact that Fabian is now in the squad. 84 rated he is. He's much better than Torreira by one rating, but still, he's going to have a lot of room to improve. And it's like nothing ever changed because we're in sixth halfway through the season. In the Champions League group, it was a little bit of a struggle. Two wins, two draws, two losses. Both of those losses were not against PSG. They were against PSV and Galatasaray. But it's okay though, because we actually bounced back against PSG and managed to finish second because of that. But then... J joining Real Madrid when the transfer window opens? Wait, hold on, what? After everything we've been through together, this is how you repay me, Pierre? We were just starting to improve. We just won the Europa League. We're back in the Champions League. This is what you wanted. And this is how you repay me, Pierre? I told you I'd put this team on my back and work my blood, sweat, and tears into every single thing. And this, Pierre, this, Pierre, is how you repay me! Fine. I'll just find a better striker then. Go be a soulless corpse at Real Madrid for all I care. I'll find me the next Thierry Henry. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never looked at a swap deal in this game and thought to myself, Hey, that's a pretty good deal. But that all changed when I saw Tottenham offer me money and Danny Rose. For Bernd Leno. Anyways, to replace Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, we got ourselves Richarlison for 115.1 million. Hopefully, he can live up to the standards. And since Leander Dendonker was the midfielder not getting much playtime, we decided to sell him to Sevilla for 37 million. Now, I was gonna use this money to buy a new defender, but last minute while trying to buy Joe Gomez for 90 million, I thought to myself, why not trust in Gabriel? See what happens. So I did just that. Again, you can clown on me if this doesn't work out. 1-0 no win. Good start. Atletico Madrid. A 1-0 no win. Nice. 2-1 win against Chelsea in, I believe that was the final of the Carabao Cup. Hey yo, we're into the quarterfinals of the Champions League, I'm pretty sure. Fulham, win. Manchester City, a win. Liverpool, a win. Oh my god, dude, we're in the semifinals, what the hell? <laughs> Liverpool, a uh, draw. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Could we maybe? <laughs> we f***ing made it to the Champions League final in our first visit back to the Champions League. Yep, we made it to the Champions League final before even winning the league. Not sure how this really happened. 
Also, not to mention, this is our first appearance back in the Champions League, and we did this. The FA Cup, not exactly that great in the round 3 replay, we lose to Cardiff. But in the Carabao Cup, we won, beating Chelsea 2-1. And there's a look at the Champions League final again. Arsenal versus Leipzig. Kind of a weird matchup, but I'll take it. Premier League top scores, we had none. Assists, again, nothing. But on the clean sheets, we had Leno leading it this time with 16. A good little bounce back for him, since last season in the Premier League wasn't great for him. Top scorers in the Champions League, though, Fabian with 7. He's tied for first with Horta from Braga and Neymar. In the assists, there's no one until 12th place, Odegaard with 3 for us. In the clean sheets column, only 3 for Leno, but I don't think that really matters. We're kind of the ones that are having the last laugh because we're in the final of the damn Champions League. Looking at the overall club top scorers and assisters, it's Fabian this time. You can very much say he was our best signing this season. He had 21 goals, the most this season for the club. Followed by him though, right behind him is Nico Pepe with another fantastic season 20 goals to his name richarlison after coming here in january had 15 goals odegaard 10 goals and then finally kieran tierney rounds out the top five with six assist wise it's odegaard leading it this time he finally had the double digits 10 goals 10 assists then it's fabian with seven nico pepe with six a little bit less than last time but it's fine he still scored 20 goals bukayo saka finally gets on the list with six and then it's burns leno somehow getting five of his own and he ranks himself fifth in the overall top assisters. And because we didn't win the league, it means that even though we are in the Champions League final, we have to keep rebuilding this team until we win both the league and the Champions League final. Our midfield is so solid. Fabian at an 87, Barty at an 85, Odegaard jumped up to an 88, Richarlison is already 86, Leno now 89. The only weakness is probably Gabriel, but we said we'd trust in Gabriel, so I can't really say much there. The Champions League final in season two. Yeah, I didn't see this happening either, but here we are. First opportunity to Arsenal, it's Fabian out to Odegaard. Now it's brought to Pepe's feet as he runs down the right flank, cuts inside, tries a little signature finesse, and it's straight at the keeper. Leipzig in the 25th minute now, it's Brozovic passing this to Lamella, and Lamella passes the ball to Leimer. Leimer gets a good ball to Calvert-Lewin, takes the shot, and it's saved pretty easily by Leno. Richarlison now. That's a Pepe. Good ball. He's so on site. What are you talking about, ref? I want to see this. I want to see this. I thought I timed that perfectly. Okay, maybe I didn't. Close to the end of the first half, it's Fabian starting the counterattack for Nico Pepe to just run with this ball, try and get past Hermoso, and he kind of does. He has some space to just go into the box. He outstrengthens Hermoso, takes the shot, and it's a good save by Gulashi. Very interesting match we have on our hands, and it's Lamella leading this attack as he just runs into the space, gets it to Poulsen, somehow bounces to Calvert-Lewin. Baba boo, baba boo, baba boo. Counter attack for Arsenal though, it's Tomas Barty passing this to Bukayo Saka. Saka gets it to the center circle to Fabian. Fabian with plenty of space to run into. He gets a fantastic through ball to Nicola Pepe. And it's just him. Pepe, please! Yes! F***ing come on! All tied up here in the Olympia Stadion. Extra time now, it's Leipzig on the ball, but they lose it. It's now Bukayo Saka to reach Charleston. Great low passing play, a quick little counter attack. And it's Odegaard to finish that one into the bottom right corner. 2-1 to Arsenal, and that would be that. Our very first Champions League trophy, and it only just took two seasons. And with the win in the Champions League final, we should focus more on the league. And also the Champions League final, but more importantly, the league. We have a couple players departing, Mustafi and Kolasinac, and I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. Kolasinac can leave for all I care. Mustafi, on the other hand, he actually did pretty well. We'll just have to buy a new defender, it's fine. With a win in the Champions League, we get boosted up to 254.8 million. Running right into the transfers, we get ourselves Milan Skriniar for 145 million from Real Madrid. We trusted in Gabriel, but I just feel like we need the improvement now if we want to have a chance of winning the league. Emil Smith-Rowe leaves for Strasbourg for 3.6 million. Willian finally leaves for 2 million. Never mind. Joe Willock has another trip to Spain as he's loaned out to Valencia. And then with the remaining money we had, which is still quite a bit of money, we got Unai Simon for 54 million from Athletic Bilbao. And then finally, we got a backup left back in Junior Firpo, quite a strong backup left back, for 50 million 
from Barcelona. And we fast forward to the halfway point of the season where Liverpool have won 20 matches and only lost one. No draws, so they're at 60 points. So we're just here chilling with our 15 wins, 2 draws and 4 losses. 13 points behind Liverpool. In the groups of the Champions League, it was a bit of a struggle again for whatever reason. We had a much easier group, yet yeah, for some reason we struggled. Only two wins, three draws, one loss, but we still managed to win the group nonetheless. I didn't show the squad before simming, so here it is now. It's even more improved. I have no clue how we struggled in the Champions League like we did. Our defense is so insane. We got Tierney at an 87, Skriniar at an 88, Jimenez 89, Bayerin has definitely gone over his potential at an 85. I'm really happy about that because I didn't really want to sell him. He's kind of my favorite player at the club right now. There is no way we are about to go to the... <laughs> Why? <laughs> we are about to be in the Champions League final again. And I can tell you right now, we, we definitely did not win the league. Looking at the table, Liverpool kind of dropped a few points, but they still finished with 99. And then there's us in second with 84. We really didn't have much of a chance against Liverpool. In the FA Cup, we still can't get past Manchester City, though we lost on penalties this time. In the Carabao Cup, we lost to Wolves in round four. And then finally, of course, another Champions League final, this one against Bayern Munich. Top scorers in the Premier League, a very good race there. You got Havertz with 30, our own Richarlison with 29, and then Sterling to round off the top three with 26. The assists looking pretty good with Fabian at 11, Odegaard in 3rd with 9, and then Pepe in 15th with 6. Clean sheets, this time Alisson was just too overpowered, he had 20, but Leno was right behind him with 14. Pepe and Fabian shared 5 goals each in the Champions League. Pepe had the most assists for us with 4, and finally, Leno actually had more clean sheets this time with 5. Another overall top scorers and assisters, Richarlison this time had a very good season, 35 goals. Then behind him is Nico Pepe again with 22, followed by them is Fabian with 18, Odegaard with 13, and Thomas Partey with 11. Fabian led the assist this time around with 13, then Odegaard with 12, Nico Pepe with 11, Bukayo Saka once again in the list with 6, and Thomas Partey to round off the top 5 with 5. And yes, another Champions League final. We got a very, very solid squad in Bayern Munich, so let's see what happens. An early opportunity in the 30th minute is Thomas Partey out to Kieran Tierney on the left flank, and Kieran Tierney, known for his attacking abilities, just runs into the box and takes it himself. He beats the keeper and makes it 1-0 to the Gunners. Corner for Bayern in the 67th minute. It's cleared out, but it only falls to Alderweireld. Yes, he's playing for Bayern in this year. Now he brings it to Sané. Sané with a little bit of trickery, and it's just him versus the keeper. Beats the keeper. 1-0. All. all right, Lewandowski. Right, right. Or miss, you know, I'll take that too. Pepe. Oh, that was strong. All right, Leroy Sané. I'm feeling right. Oh, burned Leno. Richarlison, we're gonna go bottom left. Oh, sh I messed that up. Taliso, Taliso. Mm, right down the middle. Okay, we just can't mess this one up. That was a good penalty. Goretzka, uh, left. Oh, completely missed it. This is to give us yet another Champions League trophy. Don't fail us. Yes! <laughs> another one, boys! And that's right, folks. We've won the Champions League twice, but we still haven't won the Premier League since 2004. At this point, God knows what it will take to actually win the league. But here's a look at the squad. Everyone just thriving so much. Nico Pepe now 90. Fabian now 90. Odegaard 91. Jimenez 90. Leno 90. There's so many 90 rated players. This is like a dream. But there's something that's just wrong with the squad that just won't let us win the league. And I'm going to have to look at the bench for this one because I don't really see much of an issue with the starting 11. As you can see, Nketiah is our best striker behind Richarlison and Martinez is our best left winger behind Saka, and it's season four, so I think it's time we maybe do something about that. And yeah, I think we have plenty of money to do something with that, because we have 223 million. So to kick off the transfers for season four, it's Eddie Nketiah leaving for Nice, 17.3 million. Gabriel Martinelli leaves for 17 million. He goes to PSV. So what did I do with all this money, you may ask? Did I get a backup striker? Well, not just yet, because I actually got myself Federico Valverde 
for 165 million. That's definitely a club record. On top of that, we got ourselves Leon Bailey for 60 million. He comes from Napoli. And finally, to round off the transfers for this season, Joe Willick goes off to Bayern for two years. So remember when I said we would get a new backup striker? Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. But hey, at least we improved the squad depth a little bit. We have Thomas Partey on the bench. I mean, that's really saying something if you have an 87 rated player on the bench. So again, I kind of forgot to show the squad before I started simming. So this is the squad in December. As you can see, it's quite good. Nico Pepe, Fabian, Odegaard, Valverde, and Richarlison are all 91 rated. This just makes me want to cry, because there's no way in hell I will ever see this type of quality in real life. But in the Premier League after December, it just didn't really do much. 42 points, we're placed in 6th right now. We're tied with Spurs and Manchester City, but still, I would assume that maybe this squad would be good enough to be 2nd or 3rd or something. Aston Villa, win. Can we get a win against Liverpool here? Probably not. Oh, okay. Maybe things are getting better. Uh, Watford, get a win there, though. Man City, win there. Okay, I'm starting to gain a little more hope for the league. Never mind, it's gone. Uh, Spurs, we got a draw, though. We're just... We're not getting good results against the teams we need to get results against. But we do win against PSG. I'm pretty sure we are into the final of another Champions League. Uh, please tell me we won the league this time. Please? 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 Why is God so cruel? FA Cup, we lose to Manchester City in round four. But we do bounce back in the Carabao Cup with a 4 0 win against Liverpool. And you saw it before, and here it is again. We are in our third consecutive Champions League final. Top scores. Pepe with 18, he's ranked third. Assists, we had two players, Pepe with eight, and also Fabian with eight. Clean sheets, Leno with 14, he was ranked fourth this time. Champions League, we had Valverde, signing of the season with nine goals. Nico Pepe had four assists, he was second in that column. Overall top scores again, this time it's Nico Pepe leading this one with 32 goals, followed by him, Richarlison with 21, Odegaard 17 goals, Fabian with 16 and 15 for Valverde. So, another Champions League final, and we're just gonna sum this one up because it's our third final. We ended up doing really well. We actually destroyed Real Madrid, to be fair. Nico Pepe opened the score early on in the second half, making it 1 0 to us. And then Federico Valverde decided to just catch fire, and he scored a hat trick against his former club, making it 4 0 to Arsenal against Real Madrid in the Champions League final. We get our three peats, and yes, there it is, we lift again, another trophy. When's the last time we won the Premier League again? Oh yeah, that's right, 2004. So, with three Champions League trophies and no league title, <laughs> what the f*** are we supposed to do? I guess I'll have to do something I didn't think I needed to do. This is my last solution, my only hope. I turn to you, for I must win the Premier League title. Give me the power, Unai Emery! Your brilliance, I must soak it in, for I shall win the Premier League title for Arsenal FC! Unai Emery, for you are the greatest manager of all time. Share your knowledge, your brilliance, with me! With more than 300 million, I scouted through a list of the most world-class players on this list. Daniel Malin has come to our club for 107.8 million. He comes from Liverpool. This is basically Operation Steel from Liverpool. That way, they become weaker and we become stronger. In comes Reese James for 93 million. Another backup in behind Bayerin, and he's coming from Bayern Munich. And finally, to round it all off, Dan Axel Zagadou. He was in the Arsenal career mode in FIFA 20. Welcome to the Arsenal rebuild of FIFA 21, my friend. He comes from Leverkusen for 65 million. Our starting 11 is incredible. Our bench is as strong as ever. I can feel it this time. I can feel the grasp of the Premier League trophy. Seventh? Huh? I swear to God, this is why people on Twitter think the Premier League is the best league in the world. Because for whatever reason, winning the Premier League in FIFA 21 is impossible! Let's just, let's just keep simming, just see what happens. Okay, Palace, one all draw against City, Liverpool away, uh, 3-0 win, okay. Okay, the winning form is starting to come back. It seems to happen every single time we go into the second half of the season. We draw against Roma, no problem there. Win against Spurs, Leeds, 4-1, PSG, 2-1. Newcastle? Okay. 
I think we're into yep quarter or semi-final sorry we're still winning we're still winning we're still winning I think we did it because that winning form is quite insane please tell me we won the league finally please We won the league! Yes! It only took five seasons and three Champions League trophies, but god damn it, we fing did it! And finally, after five grueling seasons, three Champions League trophies, we finally win the league. In the FA Cup, not really great. We lost to Leicester in round four. Even worse, in the Carabao Cup, we lost in the first round, or first round for us, but it's round three against Sheffield Wednesday. But at least, we still have the Champions League final. So finally, this could be the official ending. If we win the Champions League final, we have achieved our goal of winning the league and the final in the same season. Nico Pepe had 20, Richarlison had 18. Very good for them. Assists, we had plenty more players this time. Fabian with 9, Pepe with 7, same with Richarlison. Clean sheets, Leno led it this time with 13. In the Champions League, we had Richarlison as our top scorer with 6, then Nico Pepe right behind him with 5. Pepe had the most assists for us with 5, then there's Erdegaard with 3, Fabian also with 3. Clean sheets in the Champions League, Leno finished 7th with 3. And here's your overall top scorers, Nico Pepe once again leading it this year. It's 26 goals for him this time, 24 for Richarlison. 15 for Fabian, Odegaard had 13, and Tierney again in the top 5 with 7. Pepe is just insane because he's leading the assists as well, 12, then Fabian tied with him too, Odegaard had 9, Richarlison 8, and finally Hector Bellerin once again in the top 5 with 4. And here is our beautiful squad, the squad that finally won Arsenal their first Premier League title in so many decades. Unfortunately in this final we will not have Richarlison or Hector Bellerin. Which is kind of unfortunate, but we still have very good backups in Reese James and Danielle Malin. Another matchup against Bayern Munich. Let's get into this one. Corner for Bayern in the fifth minute. It's Nabry as he crosses this one in for Koulibaly, but it's saved by Leno. Again, it's Bayern in the twelfth minute. It's Joshua Gimmick bringing this one out to Alfonso Davies. He crosses this in for Jonathan David on the end of that one. 1-0 one to Bayern Munich. This is really not how I wanted to start. 27 minutes though, Arsenal with their first opportunity. It's Fabian, gets a great pass to Bukayo Saka, and now Bukayo Saka runs right around the defender, has a shot. How the f do you miss that sh Saka? Bayern continue the dominance, it's Carvajal this time, as he just doesn't have the space to cross in, so he brings it to Nabry, who does have it, and Jonathan David just barely misses the net to make it 2-0 to Bayern. And now into the second half, it's Valverde leading this attack for Arsenal, a great pass to Daniel Malin on the wing, and now Malin versus the keeper, he finishes that one easily enough, and we're back level. Very undeserved goal, but I'll take it. Couple minutes later though, Bayern with an opportunity, but it's dispossessed, and now it's Bukayo Saka, Valverde, out to Daniel Malin on the left flank. And Daniel Malin, he tries to run away from Koulibaly, doesn't work out, he's just not fast enough, brings this down to Bukayo Saka, Saka sees an opening, and it's Valverde, and Valverde finishes that one. Valverde has himself four goals in two Champions League finals for Arsenal, and more importantly, we are now 2-1 ahead of Bayern. And could we put this one to bed? It's Nico Pepe, Valverde, beautiful Arsenal football here. You just never hear that nowadays. Malin passing this to Nico Pepe off the post. Unfortunate, but it doesn't matter because we did it. We won the Champions League final. Another brilliant turnaround. Jimenez lifting up his fourth trophy for us. And that is that. The Arsenal rebuild is done because we won the Champions League and we won the league. So while I talk in the back, here's just all the players and their overall stats. This was a very fun rebuild. I enjoyed doing this. I hope I can maybe do this again another time after another career mode. We'll just have to see. Of course, with these types of videos, I want to make them a little bit different, a little more entertaining. So then, you know, you guys actually are engaged with this type of content. Because to be honest, man, most of the content I watch where it's rebuilds or experiments or anything like that, it's, it's just just boring as all hell but that's just my opinion i'm sure some people share it i'm sure some don't but yeah be sure to follow my socials of my twitter my twitch and my instagram i have actually been active on twitch i've been streaming a lot of mario kart i just don't stream fifa i hate streaming fifa i don't, I don't know if it'll be now or later but i'll be streaming some mario 64 some mario sunshine it'll be fun so be sure to join in it's not really the content that's being shared it's more of just you know being able to interact with you guys i want to say can we get to a 
150 likes. I believe in you guys. Give me a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.